welcome to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It's our pleasure, our honor to do this event. We do it, of course, every second Friday of the month, 8.30 right here at uh, Council Chambers. It's free, it's open to the public. We sweeten the pot with a little coffee and some Danish courtesy uh, vi uh, culinary vil village, Silver Platter. Um, they are a caterer here in town and one of our longtime members. We also today just had a wonderful uh, pancake breakfast that the mayor's going to be out to tell you about very shortly and how you can help and donate to that cause that we work for today. But I'm going to start as I always do with, of course, our sponsor. And our sponsor for this month is none other than Florida Community Health Centers. And I have back with me, she's done the show with me before. Yes. It's Wilhelmina Lewis. She is a doctor and she is the CEO of Florida Community Health. Welcome back. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Thank you for coming. We, I, You gave me something today that I found very impressive, some um, literature for me to read over. But I do want to start, as we always do, if this is people's first time tuning into the show, which I can't imagine it is. It can't be. No, I'm sure we have only loyal viewers. But what is Florida Community Health? We are a private nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that is really what's called a community health center, which means that we provide cost-effective but high-quality care to everyone in our communities. Very good. And you have several locations and you have them listed here. So let's tell people where they can go to get it. And they can have insurance. They could not have insurance. You work with them either way, right? Absolutely. If they have insurance, we take almost every kind of insurance. And if they don't have insurance, we actually have what's called a sliding fee scale, which means that we look at the family's income and the number of people in their household, and we're able to provide discounts based on that amount of money. So it really makes it cost effective for everyone, but they're still able to get really high quality health care. And we also want them to come if they do have insurance because that helps offset costs. For Absolutely, them. yes. So you're really doing a community service if you're going there with insurance, yes. realistically. But also, if you have insurance and you're looking for a doctor, convenience because you yes. have so many locations. Tell us where you're located. Yes, we've been in St. Lucie County since 1977 and in Port St. Lucie since about 2002. So we actually have um, five sites in St. Lucie County, mm -hmm. one in Darwin Square, um, right in that area where the Publix is, right next door to Publix in Darwin Square. And we provide pediatric and adult services is there. We also have prenatal care there. Um, we have a site um, right across from the St. Lucie Medical Center on Hillmore that yeah. is pediatric specific. Okay. And we also have a site that's OBGYN specific in that same area. And we have a website www.fchcinc.org so everyone can get the specific addresses and telephone numbers. Okay. So I'll just kind of tell you the general areas. Um, in Fort Pierce we have a site on, right across the street from the McDonald's on yeah. Delaware and they do pediatric care, adult care, dental care, and we also have a pharmacy there, and you cannot get better prices okay. anywhere than dental at our pharmacy. Dental care and a pharmacy. Yes. Very good. And do you take Florida uh, Healthy Kids, is it called? We take everything. Okay. We will even help you get on Healthy Kids if you qualify. One of the, what we call ancillary services that we provide is assistance for people who need to enroll in insurance. Yep. So that whether that's a marketplace plan or other options that might be available for them, even if they're not our patients, wow. we have have staff who are specifically assigned to help patients make sure or help community members make sure that they're able to access all of the services in their areas. So if it's a local assistance, a state level assistance, a national level assistance, we can help them and make sure that they have the education that they need to make decisions for their family rel relative to health care. Very good. Florida Healthy Kids, uh, if you don't know, is the uh, state assistance with making sure that every child has access to health care. Yes. Not all doctors in the area take it, so when we do find somebody that does take that we want to make sure that the public knows about it so very good it's good to know that you do that as well is there anything else you want to share with us today I mean you got some great stats here for patients that you saw in 2017 it seems like you're growing 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 we are um, in 2017 in St. Lucie County we saw almost 19,000 patients and we want to make sure that St. Lucie County knows that we're a resource for them whether they have insurance or don't have insurance again we just want them to know that we're here and available to be a resource not just for the specific direct patient care but again pharmacy services assistance okay. with enrollment in those programs that we discussed earlier and then also a few other things that we can help with in terms of chronic disease management so if someone has diabetes or hypertension and they might not know the right things that they need to do from a, a nutrition standpoint or culturally kind of how to convert what things they should and should not be eating or the amounts then okay. we have staff that's also assigned to help them with those issues as well fantastic fantastic and I just want to say from a business standpoint 
standpoint, it looks like you have uh, created 240 jobs. In St. Lucie County, yes. Yes, and um, the economic impact from what you guys do here is over $21 million. Yes, that's we're really huge. excited about that. It is very, you should be proud as well. And uh, what a great service that you're providing. It's wonderful to have people who are passionate about what they do and who are really here to serve their community. And sometimes we feel like uh, we're a little bit of the best kept secret in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So we just want people to know that we're here and we're, we're ready to help them in any way that we can, even if they're not our patients. Right. And I agree, you are kind of the best kept secret, but you're doing more community outreach. You've done this show a couple times. I think all of it helps a little bit. And so uh, I'm very grateful for you for sponsoring today. It's our pleasure. It's always nice to see you too. Thank Wilhelmina. you so much. All right. Anytime. I Thank look you. To it. All right. Thanks to our sponsor. And of course, we'll be right back. As I mentioned, the mayor was very busy this morning making pancakes for a great cause, and he will be with me momentarily. Stay with us. Welcome back to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. And of course, we're here with him. He's, he's joined us. We've been working, uh, he was working behind the scenes making pancakes all morning. Please welcome the mayor of the beautiful city of Port St. Lucie, Gregory Orabeck. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. The Honorable Gregory Orabeck. We started the show a little different today. We usually start with you and I, but you were very busy. So tell us a little bit about what we were doing, uh, what you were doing this morning, mostly. I uh, poured juice. <laughs> well, but thank you for doing that. And thank you for being a part of it. And thank you, everyone who attended today. We've got Councilman Morgan back there. Woo! Uh, Councilman Carvelli is still out there, Vice Mayor, Mayor. Martin. Mm -hmm. But uh, Brandon Dolan, my right hand, uh, he's my right hand every day here at the city and also out there uh, with our Flapjack fundraiser. Mm -hmm. So earlier this year, at the very beginning of the year, I see some young people out there. And I mean, everyone's, uh, and, and everyone is touched and moved by this. Earlier this year, we lost two of uh, high school students in a head-on collision on Okeechobee, and uh, we had an RV going the wrong way, and uh, unfortunately, uh, several people died, including our two local high school students, Brittany and Santia. And uh, any loss like that is a tragedy, but it was especially uh, large and, and hard for us because Santia is part of the family. Her mom works here. Her sister works here. Uh, her, her dad is very prominent in the community, Stuart Fakita. He is uh, head of nature's keeper, does a lot of the landscaping around town, does a lot of donations. He is a, a big part of our community there, a big part of our community. And if you ever met Cynthia, she would just light up a room. She was really special. And uh, we lost her and Brittany. And what do you do when you have loss? You have to find a way to, to process it and uh, hopefully find a silver lining or a constructive way to move forward and fortunately, Stuart Fakita, her father, and the community, I think, found as constructive way as possible, and that is to create up a scholarship, at, an endowed, fully endowed scholarship at IRSC for any of uh, St. Lucie County or Okeechobee County students pursuing education, because that's what Santia's passion was, was education. So rather than get lost in despair and uh, just the hurt of, of losing your daughter, Stuart and our community have come together to, tr to try to fully endow this thing. And as some of you may know, at IRSC, one of the best state colleges in the entire country, mm -hmm. uh, top three for the last few years, and co-winner of the Aspen Award, which is like the Oscars, but for education, for much more yeah, important, yeah. obviously, than, than just film. Uh, if you get $50,000, you can fully endow a scholarship to give away 2,500 for life, forever. And if you get up to 100,000, you can actually give away $5,000 in scholarships a year in perpetuity. Perpetuity, that's SAT word for you boys. Yeah. All right. Well, where I'm hearing they might get rid of SATs, but that's a conversation for another Let's day. Let's not even say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should love the SAT. That's Robert Beach. He's an educator. He did very well on the SAT. Hey. Yes. Uh, I, I, I don't want to dig, uh, digress, though. So right now, before today's uh, fundraiser, you might have heard we did a handathon with our friend Scott Van Duzer over at Big Apple Pizza, and that was tremendous. We had a bunch of generous sponsors there. When I looked at it last night, we were at 41,800 and oh. change. So we're getting really close to that first step of 50,000 with the ultimate goal of being 100,000. But, th but thank you to, to everybody. And it was advertised that I'd be out there cooking, but you know, some people like the, the show and the pageantry. Some people love the work. I love the work. I was in the kitchen mixing it. And I say that, but really, I was the mixer because I didn't have to wear a hairnet. 
Oh, yes, that is better. That is better. But uh, I was really impressed. You know, you always have these takeaways from the event. Councilwoman Morgan is an excellent pancake chef. Those things were perfectly she, perfectly brown. Perfectly brown. Perfectly brown, brown. round, beautiful. Uh, my right hand, Brandon Dolan, he's a new father, so he's still working on his, his, mm. his skills, you know? So he was a yeah. workhorse, but we gotta send him into training with Council on Morgan about how to get that perfect brown pancake. Yes. But thank you, everybody. Please give yourself a big round of applause if you participated. <laughs> to interject something, but what she doesn't realize is she isn't mic'd and it's a TV show. Oh, she, she doesn't need she a mic. She is lady. loud. She is loud. I'll give her that. I will repeat. Pancakes left over. Okay. Just as a reminder, if y'all, you know, make a donation, take some home, put them in a baggie and freeze them, you'll have pancakes for Father's Day. There you go. Seconds. So, or take a couple of chocolate chip pancakes, put some bacon in between, and have lunch. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I think McDonald's makes a sandwich like that. They do. Yes. yes. But what Councilwoman said is um, phone it in for Father's Day and just buy your pancakes here and take them home and freeze them. No, I heard on your way out, contribute $10 per pancake. I, I heard out. that too. That's, that's what I yeah, heard. yeah, yeah. So she's, she said a lot yes, she, off camera. Well, she's, she's an effective <laughs> communicator. So. She said all, all kinds right, well, of things. Well, Very good. You. Thank you, everybody. And I, I look forward to, uh, to seeing what we raised and how, how much closer we got to that $50,000 uh, milestone. I think, milestone. I mean, you'll get there for we're, sure. We're definitely going to get there. I'd love to see the 100000 but that's um, great news that you're so close already. And, yet, and thank you for bringing that up. So when you deal with tragedy and if you can find a way to, to deal with the pain constructively, how many people might be touched by a scholarship forever? So you think about the, the student, the aspiring student, the kid from our community who was looking, well, how can I continue my education? I really can't, you know, I can't afford it. I can't make ends meet, but I'm a deserving student. So you change that person's life, right? Mm -hmm. But how many people will be changed by that person becoming an educator? Think about that. So if they go through the program and they become an educator and they end up being very good at their craft, at, at their profession, how many people does a teacher touch? I, you'd have to ask a lot. So we got Sean Boyle out there, and he's, he's good for a lot of different things, including uh, Kids at Hope. And he would tell you if you asked them that it, it only takes you know, one person in a kid's life to, to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that teacher is that one caring adult that makes a difference in, our, in, in a person's life. So if the person educated through the scholarship fund is that person, how many, how many kids, how many people will that person touch? And then how many people well, you can see that the leverage is being applied, and that's called, again, boys. And, and that, that's a row of boys. So. Uh, I would definitely recognize any girls that were there, too. But there's boys, it's a row of boys, so I'm talking to, to the boys. So geometric, exponential, we're going back to the SAT, which regardless of what Ms. Aronson says, we're still Some gonna have for, gonna forever. Uh, They're not. <laughs> That's the kind of growth we, that, that you have, and that's how many lives we're changing. So it, I just think it's just a beautiful way to, to deal with, with loss. Yes, it is very hard. You gotta process it somehow. Forever. I agree. Because you know, we have a lot of generous people out there in the audience that have probably raised money for a cause before. It's great to give someone or an organization or someone in need or cause in need $2,500, right? I mean, that's, that's wonderful to be able to do that. But when you fully endow a scholarship, it's there forever, for every year. And to me, that's where the magic happens. And don't forget, here in St. Lucie County, if you are an educator, you get your uh, degree, you can come back. We assure you a job if you graduated from here. We do. And of course, this isn't the only great scholarship. Do you want to tell us about any scholarships? I would love to. Well, Thank you do. for asking. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, of course, at the Chamber of Commerce, our foundation, we house the Young Floridian Scholarship. It's been going on since 1985. It, too, is a partnership with IRSC and a lot of local businesses um, through the Chamber. But we give uh, students from St. Lucie County, and, and you just have to live in St. Lucie County, and we give them a full two-year ride to get their associate's degree at Indian River State College, and we also give them $1,000 from the chamber to take with them wherever they choose to do their education, and it also includes a book stipend. And we have uh, been sending through 
14 students a year for that program since 1980. 14, 14 yeah. students a year since 1985. We're so proud to house that. It, it has a long history. We too have uh, adjusted our approach because it is for the associate's degree and we want to make sure that it is uh, affecting the, as many people as possible. So we are really targeting those students that are um, maybe on the fence about going into college and, and need to stay home for other reasons. And we're hoping to give them that scholarship so that they can really take advantage of it. Because it could change some of these students in the middle. Uh, it could change their lives forever and all those people in their lives forever. And we want to see that happen if we can. Well, thank you. Everyone give the chamber a big round of applause. For thank you. Helping young scholars to be in the difference. Let's move on to city business. What else we got going on these days? Crosstown is just plugging along like uh, crazy. I mean, crazy fast. Yeah, and I always say make sure you go to the webcam. Is the webcam repaired? Still Aww. down. So I always say go to the webcam at crosstownextension.com. Uh, but unfortunately, the webcam got struck by lightning. We're, we're waiting to replace it, replace oh. it out. So. I don't for any of you that, that watch that more than the Kardashians, and there are a couple of you that, that do, unfortunately, there's still a couple of you that watch the Kardashians, but <laughs> for, for those uh, heavy watchers out there, we'll get that back up as, as soon as possible. So, you know, you hate, to, you hate to ever jinx anything, but that project is going along as well as a project can go along, and the majority of the piles are in now, and uh, so, you know, they drive those concrete piles in. That's what supports the, the structure. And once you get all of those in and you don't hit any pockets of weird stuff, you know, underneath the riverbed, you're, you're kind of, you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen and you're, you're going to make it through to the other side. Good. Uh, but they're doing great. And our contractor, honestly, that project, even though it's, it's major money to us, right, it's $89 million, we expected it to cost 120. You know, that's what we had budgeted just for the bridge itself. The actual road cost a lot more than that. But we, we thought it would be 120, it came in at 89. Western Archer, they're, they're a fabulous contractor, they do bridges everywhere. They want to get off that job as soon as possible because anywhere else they go, they're going to make much more money. So they are really motivated to, to get, get out of done. Dodge. Done. Yes, absolutely, which is nice. You just, and, and I know because they're quality, they won't cut corners, but. Okay. That's what you would watch for, for quality control there. And the, um, the money is earmarked for Crosstown Bridge. It, can it be used for any road improvement projects, or it is just Crosstown? Just Crosstown. Okay. I just always want to make sure. Because you know how people think, oh, we have extra $20 million. Could you fix the something in my neighborhood? You yeah, know how that goes. Yes. Yeah. And especially with Crosstown. Crosstown is a, it's paid for by bonds that are funded mm -hmm. by, gen, uh, by a general referendum that the people passed, I think, I don't know if it was 89% or 91%. Check but that uh, nine out of 10 voters back in the day said, hey, we want Crosstown, we're gonna pay for it. And we vote to increase our millage mm -hmm. to pay just for Crosstown. Yeah, so. and you can't move that money around. You don't have the authority around. to go buy yeah. anything else with it. It is for Crosstown and only for Crosstown. No, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't build another road with it. Yeah. You couldn't- uh, Put in street lights pay for or for more police officers. Yeah. You couldn't uh, do more traffic enforcement. And I say that because um, couldn't you know, put a trap door in the uh, floor there, or whenever Ooh. somebody steps up to public comment, and you're like, <laughs> "Oh no, we, we uh, encourage no, we encourage public comment." Public comment is a, probably one of the funnest parts of the whole. There's always one though, you know. So yeah, like, like, don't like, point at anybody. Is no. See, did you see how I did that? <laughs> yeah, see, I see. I it was bar. very circly. See, a lot I, of people internalize when you do that. Yeah. You know, so they're thinking, "Oh, he was He's, talking." He, to, yeah. You no. looked right at me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I, wanted, I brought it up because, of course, we're uh, working on the half-cent sales tax increase, which will go to other road projects in the community. Oh, you're and going half-cent? I'm going half-cent, but I'm going half-cent education. Go run and get the boards. No, no, we're going education because this is a city uh, show. Oh, and we can educate. We have boards. Yeah, we can educate. educate. Um, I don't know if we need the boards, but we, because we, that, that's short notice. Well, we're going to have a show, and we keep these right by the door in the office. Okay, so we'll do a whole show yeah, on the half-cent sales it, tax. Show, huh? But just to tease you a little bit, we the chamber is definitely for, it's going to spread uh, uh, the onus around to everybody instead of sometimes it's just homeowners. or. But we're, we're excited to try to help get this through. It's going to be sunsetted. It's only going to be for 10 years, but we'll do a whole thing on it. So we'll move on because we'll do a whole show on it maybe next month.
All right, well, we can't, we gotta say something now. So I just came back from Boston. I was at the US Conference of Mayors <laughs> summer meeting in Boston. And in Boston, she's probably laughing because she remembers. She wasn't there personally. Oh, Pat's oh, yeah, got bring, the boards. Okay, bring, so. Bring them down. All right, so. Uh, it, there was a little tea disregard party. Disregard everything I just said. We're going to dive in. <laughs> there, was a little, there was a little tea party in Boston once upon a time. So no one in America likes taxes. In fact, you could argue that our, uh, our country was founded. <laughs> Russell, you're up. <laughs> yeah, come on. All right. <laughs> it's like our, our, our little hipster Vanna right there. <laughs> No, no, this is all volunteer work, sir. You're getting paid in our adoration. We'll have to see if Polo yeah. will sponsor you. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a Polo shirt on. Yeah. Oh, now we're going to make his arms tired. Workers comp. Feel the burn. Okay. Is he on the is he on the payroll for you? He is not on my payroll. No. Oh, okay. oh no. He is a member. <laughs> I'm on his payroll. <laughs> <laughs> So being in Boston, you know, definitely sensitive to the fact that there was once upon a time a little uh, tea party. So in America, we do not like taxes, and we don't take them lightly. But at the end of the day, if, uh, if Russell could hold perfectly still and not even move a muscle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like you're getting an x-ray. Wh what you're seeing there is the actual project list for our proposed sales tax. So a couple of years ago, the county tried this, and the people of St. Lucie County said, 53 to 47 that we didn't want the half cent uh, sales tax. No one on the political side, none of the leadership really came out in support of it. The chamber fought the good fight. We uh, tried. Some of the administrators did, but, but no one came out in support of it. And I can just speak personally, the reason why I didn't support it back then is the city had uh, unfortunately ha raised the millage rate. And so property taxes had gone up and I thought it was a terrible time, bless you, to come back in and then raise a, a different tax. But at the end of the day, what you see on this proposed project list is that we have a list of, I, I think, really needed projects. And I would ask anyone to argue against these projects. So St. Lucie West is great. It's almost built out. We all go there to shop and eat and play. Um, the, only, the only drawback, there's two drawbacks to St. Lucie West. St. Lucie West Boulevard and drainage. So the St. Lucie West Services District is working on drainage. You see Lake Harvey now across from Lowe's. Drainage is getting better. But the traffic, we gotta do something about the traffic. So the Florida Department of Transportation, they're working on the overpass and that interchange at, at I-95 is gonna help a lot, but we gotta deal with St. Lucie West Boulevard. So we're proposing to improve every single intersection on St. Lucie West Boulevard, even the technically Prima Vista side at, at Bayshore, Bayshore and, and Prima Vista slash St. Lucie West Boulevard. So we would improve every single intersection in there because th that's where your, your hangups are. Uh, has anyone ever been concerned about sidewalks in Port St. Lucie? Has that issue ever come up? I've yeah. never heard of this before. Of course, you know, you're, you're, if this is your first time, you know, I, I have a very dry sense of humor. I could be a little facetious, yes. So that, that, that was sarcasm. So sidewalks are a huge thing, right? Because GDC didn't really put them in for us, so we got a retrofit. We've been talking about it for decades, but they're hugely expensive. You got to redo the drainage. Our whole sidewalk master plan would get done. So every major sidewalk that we've ever planned and proposed would get, get done in this 10 year period, repaving. So we have a thousand lane miles of roads in the city of Port St. Lucie, because we're 120 square miles, that's a lot. Uh, right now we only invest about two and a half, three million a year in repaving. We're on about a 40 year cycle, 50 year cycle. We, we need to be on a 20 year cycle this will let us invest enough and ramp up our, our spending in behind so that from now on, the roads in Port St. Lucie will, be, will always be basically in, in, in great condition. So they're, they're gonna get paved basically 5%, you know, 1 20th of the roads will get paved every year. And we'll probably, we'll probably front load that to really give you a sense of boom, hey, there's a lot of fresh blacktop out there. Traffic signal coordination, we all want our, our signals to talk to each other so we don't get stopped and we're going one way on PSL Boulevard across town. That'll get done. Floresta, anyone ever been on Floresta? Been talking about improving it for a few decades. Uh, that will get done. We just adopted a master plan that would fund it. And uh, if anyone's ever been north on Kashmir in California up to Torino, it's a very beautiful neighborhood, but the intersections stink where California and and Kashmir hit Torino Circle, those would get the roundabout treatment and really move traffic just like it, it has uh, over by the stadium and the college where we put that roundabout in and basically everywhere else. 
uh, US one improvements. So we talked about Crosstown, right? Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever heard of City Center? So in order to, to really make uh, a big push on redevelopment of US one, we'll have Crosstown opening up, we'll, beauti we'll beautify US one and create that marketing corridor, hopefully at the same time that City Center is going vertical. So all of that could happen. There's a contingency in there, and there's another project, I don't know if it's on there or not, but widening of California. So we will widen California to, to four lanes, if you know where that's at, to connect Crosstown to St. Lucie West, and that's part of- That's uh, under the first one, that's improving. million. So. No, the, that's the intersect, there it is, 10 million. Yeah, that's a major road. Anytime you add lanes to roads, you're, you're, talking, you're talking really big bucks. So that's, that's a $10 million project. So those are real projects. That's what the sales tax in Port St. Lucie is for, period. That's all it's for. Those projects will get done. They will get done in 10 years, and then that half cent will go away. Thank you. You did a great job, buddy. You did a great Thank job. You. Thank Give you. Give him a round of applause. Um, he not only looks good, he's functional. You know, that's important. That's important. I wanted to say that I always like to clarify that when you say city center, you don't mean the civic center. The civic center is at city center. Correct. So city center is the whole uh, development. Area, yeah. Not which the is, building. Which is not just, and it's always, thank you, because it's always good to, to remind everyone, the city of Port St. Lucie does not own city center. Okay? We own the civic center, which is a recreation and meeting facility that also serves as a hurricane shelter and recovery mm -hmm. area. We own the parking garage. We own the fountain and the stage. Everything else is privately held and right now is in the hands of a SEC appointed receiver. Mm -hmm. So we never own the property. We don't own it now. We have to wait for the SEC appointed receiver to get to uh, complete a contract with a prospective purchaser, mm -hmm. which there is one out there, but the SEC uh, appointed receiver has got to go to the judge get the judge to sign off on the, the court, to sign off on the deal, and then we get to talk to the developer to see if, what, if it's a match. Yeah, what they're gonna do and, and what their plans are. I also wanted to do my own personal crusade, my own personal uh, public service announcement, something that's been driving me crazy. On sales tax? No. Nope. Can we just stick to the sales tax for one second? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you brought it up, this is your fault. I thought so. we finished, we let Russell go, I thought we were done. Well, we, we got the project list out there. Okay. Uh, now, of course, this is, this is countywide, and the county can speak for all the county projects, but in Port St. Lucie, we should be very happy that at the top of their list is fixing Prima Vista Boulevard. Yes, yes. So Prima Vista Boulevard is not in the city of Port St. Lucie. And this has been so bad historically that former city managers back in the day put up signs that said, this road not maintained by city, this, this road maintained by St. Lucie County. During my tenure as mayor, I worked with the county chair of the time and the county administrator to get up a sign on US 1 that said Port St. Lucie three miles that away yeah. because the people were so upset that their visitors were coming down Prima Vista and thought it was a, a city road. So it's really, in a, it really needs to be fixed, enhanced, and it's right at the list. So, so that's a great thing. The other thing is, and it's, I think it's the most important argument about sales tax, is. If you, like, uh, like me, believe that those projects are good projects, important projects, those projects need to get done, do you want the, just the property owners, the taxpayers, the, the property tax payers to pay for those? Do you want to pay for that solely? Or do you want everyone who uses the road and everyone who visits to help pay for those projects? Because that's what sales tax allows. You know, otherwise, our main source of revenue is property tax dollars, which only property owners pay that. So do you, do you want everyone who helps to create the, the challenge to help solve the challenge? And the perfect example of this is recently I was in Cheddar's, and it's that time of year where I had a reason to talk to people that were just a mass, mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, I'm the mayor, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I, I can't tell you, because we're on TV, what I was really doing, but just, I was talking to these people <laughs> in, this, in this, I can't cross the streams, if you know what I mean. I feel like they know, but I'm so, not gonna say it either. And there was this kind of crusty guy, you know, I told him, I'm really honest, there's this kind of crusty guy, he's hard to reach, he's, he's really upset, like, sir, St. Lucie West, you're right, uh, there is a traffic problem on St. Lucie West Boulevard, it's one of the few problems of living in St. Lucie West, but we're going to address it, we have this plan, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, it's going to make a difference. 
and with Crosstown, it's really going to be as, as good as, as we can get it. He wasn't convinced. And he didn't want what I was selling. And, but in discussing with it further, he lived in PGA Village. Folks, PGA Village is an unincorporated St. Lucie County. No one in PGA Village pays property taxes to the city of Port St. Lucie. They do not. So here I was running into this very unhappy citizen who was not supporting the proposal nope. or me. Nope. Not particularly happy. Okay. Uh, couldn't, I couldn't reach him, in, at least in that, that short amount of time. And the reality was he will never pay taxes in our current system to help solve the problem that, one, he's helping to create. Yeah. And two, you know, he's, he's, he's complaining about. But sales tax, when he's at Cheddar's or when he's buying goods and services, when he's helping create that very traffic on St. Lucie West Boulevard that he's complaining about, when he comes over, he would pay sales tax that would help solve the problem that he's complaining about. So do you want everyone who helps create the problem to solve the problem, or do you want to say no to the sales tax and just either say, oh no, as property, as property owners, we should pay for it all. Or are you, do you want to tell the people of Port St. Lucie that we can't do those projects for, for 10 to 20 years? Because no matter how you feel about government spending, hopefully we've developed a relationship over the years that you know when I say that we don't have $88 million in our back pocket to bust out for those projects, we don't. You don't have any? You know, the good news about him living in uh, PGA Village, though, is also he... Uh he doesn't vote in your district. <laughs> <laughs> so, silver lining. We'll be right back. All right, right after this, everybody. coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. We had a little bit of technical difficulties and we've decided that we're going to switch some things up and we're going to get to our Community Impact Award winner. Did I say it right? You absolutely nailed it. Yay. You didn't even look at the award. That was impressive. I didn't. Um, from the Children's Services Council, please welcome their Executive Director, Sean Boyle. President CEO. You. No? Executive Director. Okay, good, 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 good. So as you know, we give out the Community Impact Award each month to that individual that's working hard every single day to make a difference. Yes. And one of our priorities is keeping kids in school. And part of that strategy is those kids that get suspended from school, instead of staying at home unattended, you know, that was one of the first projects that I worked on when I came to the Children's Services Council. Kids that were being suspended were home, un, you know, unsupervised, yeah. running the streets, causing all kinds of issues. Yes, it was so, vacation. Exa well, it was worse than that at times. <laughs> but uh, so we established a program called Project Rock so that kids have somewhere positive to go to get caught up on their homework. The, the out-of-school suspension is turned into an in-school suspension, and they address a lot of the behavior that got them suspended. So it's not considered an out-of-school suspension. Right, if they, if go they go to Project, Project Rock. Rock. Oh, that's, that's nice. So one of the great organizations that we work with is Club Pure. Okay. And they, they host the Project Rock um, off of Oleander. And we are awarding today Chris, who's the lead teacher and also mentor, who we've... Hold on we a second. Time out. Kids of PSL, there is no suspension that's nice. Doesn't uh, matter if it's OSS, well, ISS, there is no such thing as a nice suspension. Th this is true, but I will say Chris has been so impactful. We've, we've heard from so many kids that have been suspended and have turned it around and really attributed it to Chris. And I will say in the audience today... What's his last name? Favali. So I, I, that's the first time I pronounced it right. But uh, so, so I will say that you've been addressing the young young men in the crowd today. Chris is such a powerful mentor that the kids that are in the audience today drove from Daytona this morning to be here uh, to see Chris get his award. Wow! They, you brought them. Very nice. So. We're presenting this award to Chris for all the work that he does, not only at, at Project Rock, but also at Club Pure, day in and day out for our community. Fantastic. Congratulations, Chris. What were these guys doing in Daytona? Um, well, we actually went to a... Sorry, I lost my voice. Cause... <laughs> oh, you've been in Daytona, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys that are here with us today are in our youth group, and uh, we went to Daytona for a conference. It's called Passion. And uh, we did squad wars, so we're screaming, chanting, and then at night uh, they had services and things like that. But they came up here this morning to support. And um, if you have I a could, squad, 
Yeah, squad. We were the are bandits. In, are you in Taylor Swift squad? Like a Taylor Swift squad? <laughs> bandits. Oh, yes. Yeah, there. <laughs> I think he does have a awesome. full Taylor Swift posse. <laughs> so, real quick, like what you were saying, um, if I could. Absolutely. Um, really, regardless of what we what we say about getting suspended, there are children who are getting suspended, and it's an honor to me just to be able to be there. And with, I mean, without Children's Service Council and Club Pure, I wouldn't be standing here right now. But it's an honor to be able to have a place where kids can come to be safe and keep their grades up. And then the, my favorite part about Project Rock is we get to work on the conflict. So the best part is when both, say, children got in a fight, the best part is when they both show up because we can resolve the conflict. And we've actually never had two children come to our program without leaving shaking hands and, and heading back to school with things working out. And I say that because if, if we don't have a place for them to come, and to work things out, it stays. Yeah, Everything stays. You go back to school and things may seem fine, but the minute somebody looks at you funny or you hear something, it, it just goes right back. Yeah, you so, need resolve. Very so good. that's what we're able to do. So. Clearly see why he won this award, right? Yeah, I mean, he's very passionate. <laughs> I love this. I love, And I love that your students are passionate about you too. That says a lot. So Thank you guys. What were they chanting? Bandits. When we went to Passion, they split there was 5,900 kids in the building, and they split them up into four groups, and you had to you had to have squad spirit. So that was just the squad spirit coming out. Nice. <laughs> well, I want to invite this squad up for uh, pictures. All right. The full squad. Come on, squad. <laughs> Come on, squad. The mayor and I will hug the desk. You want to hug the desk with me, and we'll fill them in. You guys come up, and we'll fill them in behind us, and we'll come, take some pictures. Crowd in here. There we go. All right. Well, don't like him so much you ever get suspended again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> really. These aren't the kids that got suspended, all. No, they are. <laughs> There's a ton of room over here by the mayor. Let's go. Head, sit up. Head, uh, get, get all of them in the middle. That's where you get some Come up front, though, mayor. They want to have you in the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Have, right here by Sean. Nah. Oh, blocking everybody. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> I'm short. If you cut me out, I won't be offended. Oh, no. Sean never has been to Dead? school picture day. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to be in the back, dude. Yeah, I tried to go to the back. You won't let me go Good. back. So we're back. We're taking questions. We have our first question. Hi, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I want to go back to the crosstown and the budget for that, and I don't have a clear understanding, and I'd like to have that. Uh, you say there was a bond issue for $120 million for that crosstown parkway, and the contractors are at a 88 or 89,000 or million uh, to complete that, uh, that the uh, money cannot be spent on anything else but crosstown. So $31 million in excess, that seems like an awful lot of icing on the cake. What will you do with that if you can't spend it on crosstown? Uh, will you give that back to the taxpayers? Is that something you've already got that you return or, or is that just really doesn't even exist anymore? It doesn't exist. So thank you for the question. And, and we were jumping around in segments, but before you acknowledged you know, you're just trying to get a, a feel for what the facts are. So the facts are that when you, do a, when you do a referendum like that and you put on an additional millage just for a crosstown, it doesn't generate $120 million a year, right? It, it generates $5 million a year, $6 million a year. So what happens is the city floats bonds, right, as a debt instrument and uses the proceeds from the bonds to pay for the service. So, but we don't issue the bonds before we need them. So there's not 120 million sitting in an account somewhere. Every year, as part of the property tax collection, there's a portion dedicated just to Crosstown, and that pays for the debt service. So as a result of having a, a $30 million savings, that means we won't issue another $30 million of debt when we need it. Does, does, that, does yes. that help explain That's it? a good question, yeah. though, because people, they will ask that. They want yes. the extra money to use for other projects. So thank or, they, or they want it back. But yeah, so that, that yeah. doesn't. So it what that means taken. is that we will be able to get rid of that bond issue faster. So, yeah. so essentially, once you've paid for it with the year after year after year, once it's paid for, you will drop that from our property taxes. Correct. Okay. Yes, and it's, it's, a, it's a big portion of, 
of the millage. I didn't look at it. I don't know if it's 1.2. Let me go here. Do we have any estimates? And I know I'm putting everybody on the spot here. Do we have any estimates of when we might get that, when we might reach 86 million on that? Because that's been going on for a long time. When did we pass that, Pat? 2005. 2005. No, but don't forget that, the, like I said before, the bridge is actually less than the roadway. So the, the, the referendum and everything, we've done the whole section all the way from you know, I-95 to where it ends right now and then to make the connection to US-1. So there's hundreds of millions of dollars of additional expenditures okay. in addition to the actual bridge. Okay. So this latest project of 89 million was just for the bridge itself. Let's say another 250 million has already gone into the ground for that six lane divided road and all the intersections. Okay. Not to mention all the property acquisition and, and yeah, uh, everything else involved. Crosstown. Good question though, thank you for that. Any other questions? So we did all that for one question. <laughs> this show is really getting out of, we have lost total control. Anybody wanna make up a question? There we go, uh, down front. And then Michelle has one in the back. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you give us an update on the Rivergate Park and the historical buildings that are moving there? Sure. Ooh. Thank you. So we have a botanical gardens. You know, everyone hopefully knows where that's at. So if you think about Westmoreland and uh, Veterans Parkway, Veterans Memorial Parkway, that road that goes north south, south of the boulevard, Westmoreland, you have the botanical gardens, you have what we call the Westmoreland property, you have some wood slash jungle, you have the anchorage. So Botanical Gardens, that middle piece, we call the Westmoreland property. We also call it part of Riverwalk. That is slated to be a waterfront park. And right now, if you drive by, you're seeing a lot of earthwork and you're seeing pipes out there. And what we're getting ready for, we're doing the site development improvements, putting the underground utilities in, we're gonna be doing some roads and curbing and stormwater so that we can receive the historic homes that are being relocated from Peacock Ranch. So we have two historic homes out west of town on Peacock Ranch that uh, we will relocate and uh, hopefully work with some nonprofit partners to refurbish and make them available uh, for programming. So we went to the state of Florida. We got a grant to help us defray some of the costs with, with moving those structures. And I would anticipate, you know, this is all subject to a formal solicitation process, a request process, but I'd anticipate like PSL Historical Society or an organization like that operating those as museum and programmable meeting space. So that's on that front piece where you're seeing the work right now. But there's a lot of excitement on the overall parcel. Not only will you have the pavilions and a theme playground that's very special that ties into kind of the water and, and what we're all about, the Florida lifestyle. Probably what's most exciting to a lot of us is that we're uh, asking for interested parties to develop a restaurant, a waterfront restaurant on the site so that we can finally have like a port in Port St. Lucie and of course to have, a, to have that waterfront you need docks. So are you familiar with the boardwalk that's currently on, on the river? We're gonna extend that under the bridge and then connect it to the Westmoreland property. So we'll have more than a half a mile of boardwalk on the St. Lucie River. There'll be boat dockage. There's gonna be a, uh, a performance uh, portion of the boardwalk so that you'd be able to have bands perform on a, a, like a river stage back to the property. So you'd be able to have waterfront events, waterfront restaurants, you'd be able to bring your boat to it. I anticipate the city council doing a no wake zone in that area. So you, you know, there's gonna be a kayak launch. You obviously already have a boat ramp at Rivergate, just upriver. You have another beautiful boat ramp at Boat Ramp Park, just downriver. So it's really, I think, gonna finally give us that waterfront living and recreation that our city, a coastal city, has been missing. So it's, it's really exciting. Do you have a timetable? Well, the historic the, uh, homes will be moved this year as part of our capital improvements uh, program. We, they have, we have everything uh, budgeted. I would anticipate us later this year going out and asking for interested parties to partner on the uh, historical homes and, and that programming. Mm -hmm. We are out right now for interested owner uh, developers for the restaurant. That closes September. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to see who proposes it's in September and uh, we'll take it from there. So it would be great 
if we could see that restaurant under develop, development within the next year. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. For the Thanks for the question. We got another question. We'll take uh, two more questions. We had one in the back, and then uh, we have a, uh, another one up front. Go ahead, Michelle. I had made a comment once before about how beautiful the wraps are with the utility boxes at the intersections. And I see it a lot all over town, and I just happen to notice the one at my or my neighborhood isn't done yet. So I was just wondering, when is, are you still doing that project, or what's going on? We are, and I, what I have to now ask you a question, so one turn deserves another. Uh, is your box uh, at, a, at a signalized intersection, or is it a, a FPL box in your neighborhood? It's at Cal the back end of California and Del Rio at that intersection. This okay, so it is a city, because a lot of people, and, I, and actually it's a great question because it gives me a segue. So yes, we are continuing to do it. We just uh, signed an approval for another 90, I believe, or so. So we're gonna continue to roll those out until all of the cities signalize intersections, because that's what we use. Those are actually the signal controller boxes. We'll have that done. But I just got a call from FPL yesterday that uh, looks like we're gonna be able to work out an agreement that will be part of their pilot program so that FPL boxes can be done also. Now sometimes in gated communities and other places, the neighborhood's gonna have to do it, not the city. We can't go into private neighborhoods and spend public dollars, but it's gonna give us an avenue because we've had several requests, several HOAs say, hey, we love it, we wanna do it, but right now they can't. But I just got that voicemail from FPL, Amy Brunges at FPL yesterday. So uh, there's, there are more wraps coming to a place On near you. Way. Yeah. We had one more question up here again. Uh, you made comment there on the Riverwalk about creating uh, the ability to draw in more boats on what I think we have is a very vulnerable waterway for pollution. Uh, is there any concern from the Environmental Protection Agency of the residue from uh, a lot of boats pulling up in the same area and fish kill, uh, environmental uh, destruction because of uh, the emissions from boats. And that's, uh, you know, I've seen it in South Florida uh, where they have the boat around the docks and the restaurants and you look down in the water and it just is uh, floating gasoline. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm just concerned about our waterways and creating an environment that brings in a lot of pollutions get, to okay. it. We got her question, so you wanna take that one? Sure, and uh, my, my degree is in marine environmental systems from the University of Miami, so happy to take it and glad that you're concerned about the, the river. At the same time, if I don't know how much you've studied this issue, uh, what you'll see is that a lot of times there's concern in closed systems where there is no flushing action or, or anything. So sometimes when you're in very pristine freshwater bodies or other bodies where there's no flushing or mixing, you'll go to, electron, you'll go to electric motor only. But for a, um, a major water body like this that, that changes that water, I gotta tell you, are we gonna shut down the, the, the Florida lifestyle and, and we're not gonna have combustion engines on the waterway anymore? So now there's really no uh, broad concern other than uh, the general concern that we should have for, for all of our facilities, but the idea that we're gonna ruin the river by having some boats that are already in the river come to our Riverwalk parcel, I'm not, I personally, I'm not worried about it at all, and I don't think uh, the majority of people should be worried. We should be worried that we're good stewards for all of our environmental resources in a general sense, and if we really have concern for the river, let's work on uh, keeping fertilizer out of it. Let's work on building more storage and treatment. Let's do septic to sewer conversions. Let's worry about that before we worry about taking away the Florida lifestyle and then also recognizing that the fleet of outboard motors is going from two stroke to four stroke. So the engines are getting cleaner over time. So the emissions and the output are getting cleaner over time anyway. So I really appreciate the question. I appreciate the passion. I'd rather focus it on, on things that really move the needle. And in fact, I say this all the time. If we want people to love the river so that they, they can then be uh, motivated and willing to protect it, they have to be able to touch it. And right now, the largest city on the Treasure Coast, 189,000 people, 60% of St. Lucie County, 30% of the, the Tri-County Treasure Coast, to a large extent, turns its back on the river. 
We drive over it every day as fast as we can. And we don't appreciate it and love it the way we should. So we should be encouraging people to touch it, feel it, have it be a part, of, an active part of their life so that they realize how special it is, so that they do form a relationship, that they love it. And then, then when you love something, you're willing to fight for it. So quite the opposite. I would actually argue the exact opposite, ma'am, and I'm, I'm sorry that we're, we're gonna get but into it. It's a good it, question but. because the reality is, is that other people are gonna think that. So it's just, it's, she gave you the opportunity to explain um, some environmental issues, and I, I think that's great though, actually. I think it's good that she asked that because you know if one person asks it, other people are thinking it. So let's dispel it now. Good. Or agree to disagree. Yeah, that's, that's always good too. All right, we, uh, we're kind of we're running out of time. We're a little bit over. Are you good with that? If we we're good. Thank you. Up, Thank you, everybody. I have just a couple announcements. I do want to say that um, we are always the second Friday of every month, and we do have coffee and pastries courtesy of Culinary Village Silver Platter. We, and you can watch this show on Comcast 20 or Uverse 99. I think we run about six times a week, somewhere around there. I feel like uh, it's probably all at, always on at 3 in the morning. It's when we get our most audience viewers. We at the Chamber of Commerce have some announcements we want to make. We are uh, we run the Seven Gables House in downtown Fort Pierce. Uh, we do that for the city of Fort Pierce. They do own that. But we are starting tomorrow. We are going to be offering excursions to the general public, meaning you can come on into the Seven Gables, hopefully look through what will eventually become a large catalog of things to do in St. Lucie County, and we can book that for you, give you the tickets, and send you on your way. We don't have anybody providing that service in the county, so we're excited to be able to do that at our visitor center at Seven Gables. We also have an auction for chambers, uh, chamber members. You don't have to be a chamber member to purchase any of these items. You have to be a chamber member to offer an item. But we have on our website auction, it's all online. It's all uh, uh, anonymous. And we have things like oil changes, uh, salt therapy from, Himalaya, uh, from a Himalayan salt block. You can do that in St. Lucie West. Uh, a wine painting party, swig of color. Five passes for a airboat ride on Marsh Beast and Chick-fil-A basket and gift cards, as well as a one-week uh, free rent or use of Freedom Boat Club's boats. I can't say rental, so I'm just trying. I'm tripping over that because they get mad at me when I say rental. It's not rental. It's a boat club, but they'll let you try it out for one week. But you can go online and you can bid to win one of those items, and we'd love for you to do that because that is uh, helping the chamber out. As you know, we are not for profit and we are not government subsidized. We only get as much money as we can make or earn. So I wanted to put that <laughs> public service announcement out there. That's why we do shows like this, so that we can keep people uh, top of mind with the Chamber of Commerce. We are providing a service. Our Development Review Task Force is uh, working every day with all of the mun municipalities to make business operation in St. Lucie County easier and affordable. So I just wanted to put that in. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all you. Yes. Oh, you got a golf thing coming yeah, up? Yeah, we do. The Chamber has a golf tournament on uh, the last Friday of this month. It's at Gator Trace. We end it with a prime rib dinner. It's included in your golf outing for the day. It starts at 1. We also have free beer, courtesy of Isla Morada, one of our local businesses here in St. Lucie County. That will be given out on the golf course, so please join us. You can sign up online, stlucychamber.org. That's stlucychamber.org. I'm good. All right, excellent. All right. Well, everybody. thank you for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you next month. Yeah, yep. Have a great weekend.